Hey, you know what's interesting? Back when Obama specifically chose Joe Biden as a running mate in 2008 because he's white and could maybe assuage concerns about a black man being president, you know, I don't remember anyone calling Joe Biden a DEI pick back then. Also, the top contenders to be Kamala's VP pick are all white guys, specifically because we all know Democrats would be too worried to run two people of color on the same ticket. But I don't think I've heard a single person call her eventual running mate a DEI hire. But when it comes to Kamala Harris, the vice president who clinched the nomination for the Democratic Party, can you guess what they're calling her? Well, I think she's one of the weakest candidates I've ever seen in the history of our country. Uh, I, I mean, intellectually, just really kind of the bottom of the barrel. Uh, I think she was a DEI hire, and I think that that's what we're seeing. And I just don't think that they have anybody else. I just think that they're in real disarray. Biden said... First off, he said he's going to hire a, a black female for vice president, and that not he just skipped over. What about what about white females? What about any other group? It just when you go down that route, you you, um, you take mediocrity, and that's what they have right now as a vice president. So you, are you suggesting she's she was a DEI hire? One hundred percent, she was a DEI hire. Hmm. See, it's weird because I don't hear these same people encouraging Kamala right now to expand her search for VP to include anyone who's qualified and not just white guys. I mean, if you're so concerned about how race-based choices lead to mediocre leaders, why wouldn't you sound the alarm right now while you still have the chance about how the next VP might literally be a DEI hire because they're white? I mean, what if there's a more qualified Latina or black woman out there than the pull of white guys she's currently considering? If you care about DEI, why aren't you sounding off right now? You know, they're suddenly not bringing up qualifications when it comes to white guys being chosen based on their race. But when it comes to Kamala, well, Republican Representative Glenn Grothman thinks that she's being chosen by Democrats specifically because of her race. Or a lot of Democrats feel they have to stick with her um, because of her ethnic background. And um, so I'm, I'm sure there's some division there on that issue. It's not because she's the current vice president and the logical successor to the president. No, it's because of her ethnic background. See, Joe Biden, when he actually ran the first time after he was vice president, he won. It's because Typically, people view the VP as the logical successor to the president. And if they like the president, then they're going to go with the VP. But when it comes to Kamala, she's there because of her ethnic background. Simply put, black presidential candidate, that's DEI. White presidential candidate, not DEI. White vice presidential candidate, not DEI. Now, if you're sensing that there's a bit of a double standard here, you'd be correct. They're calling black politicians DEI because they're fucking racist. And DEI, as of late, is effectively being used in lieu of the N-word. And this was explained perfectly by Representative Maxwell Frost. They want to call her a DEI president or DEI candidate. She has more experience than Trump and J.D. Vance combined times a million, right? She she worked at the state level. She was the attorney general. She's vice president of the United States. She was a, a senator representing one of the largest states in the entire country. And so these are just racist dog whistles. Whenever you hear DEI, I want you to think about the N-word. I want you to think about racial slurs. That's what they actually mean. He is exactly right. A non-white person can never be qualified enough for them. Even Justice Kintanji Brown Jackson, who's the most qualified Supreme Court justice to ever be confirmed, she was still being accused of being an affirmative action hire. That was, of course, before they started doing the whole DEI bullshit. But, I mean, they trotted out the same tropes and dog whistles against her, and they do this every single time. It doesn't matter how qualified you are. If you're black, if you're a woman, you're just not qualified and can never be qualified enough in their eyes because that's not what they're looking for. To them, qualified means being white. But they're not just racist, they're also explicitly sexist too, and the right-wing pundits have wasted no time attacking Kamala Harris in both racist and overtly sexist ways. She's a DEI hire, right? She's a woman. She's colored, therefore she's got to be good. Yeah, and then there's the DEI press secretary telling you that the DEI vice president is the future of the party here. And so the future looks kind of dim for the Democrats here, but this is no shocker either. Kamala Harris, she's the original Hawk Tua girl. That's the way she got where she is. And uh, the party's going downhill if it's in her hands. That was tough. That, yeah, was, that, was, that, really was, tough. that was harsh. Republican women 
this is what they think of you. If you are voting for this party, I mean, this is how they view you. If you're a successful woman, it must be because you slept your way to the top. If you're a successful BIPOC person, well, it's only because of DEI. Kamala hasn't even been the candidate for a full week, and they've already unleashed every racist and sexist trope that they could think of because they just can't help themselves. They're not even able to hide it any longer. But I do want to look at a quick rundown from Donny O'Sullivan of CNN, who's been tracking some of the most despicable attacks against Harris, and it gets even worse. Just to give you a sense of the range uh, of what is being said, there is even a, uh, a Berter conspiracy theory uh, throwback to um, Trump and Obama. Uh, of course, uh, there's no basis at all whatsoever for, for that. The current vice president is eligible uh, to be president. Um, also, we're seeing a lot of altered videos and images. Um, some of them are quite crude. I want to just give you an example uh, of one, which I think we can show a side by side here. There is an image um, of of uh, the of the vice president there, which, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, her husband, the second gentleman, uh, and obviously been manipulated there on the left to uh, put in uh, a photo of Jeffrey Epstein. So look, stuff like that. So brotherism is back, baby. I mean, these people, they're not just crude and racist. They're also extremely fucking stupid because I don't think you want to bring up Epstein associations as a gotcha against Kamala Harris if you support Donald Trump. You can just Google Trump Epstein and many photos come up. None of them are photoshopped, by the way. Those are real photos, and there are many of them. Also, Trump is literally a rapist. So who are you to talk about sexual impropriety with regard to anyone else if that's the candidate that you support? Dozens of women have accused him of sexual misconduct. He was found liable for rape, and yet you're going to talk about somebody else? It's just so ridiculous. So it's not the own that you think it is. But what's interesting about this entire debacle is that GOP leadership already knew that this would be an issue and they've had to intervene because it's been so fucking bad. And I say this because as Politico reports, House Republican leaders told lawmakers to focus on criticizing Vice President Kamala Harris's record without reference to her race and gender. That's going to be impossible. Following caustic remarks from some Republicans attacking her on the basis of identity. During a closed door meeting Tuesday morning, chair of the House GOP campaign arm Richard Hudson and others issued the warning after a series of comments by their members that focused on Harris's race, as well as claims she is a DEI pick, according to two people in the room. Quote, this should not be about personalities, it should be about policy, and we have a record to compare, Speaker Mike Johnson told Politico as he left the Tuesday meeting, saying Harris would have to answer for Biden's record. This has nothing to do with race. It has to do with the competence of the person running for president, the relative strength of the two candidates, and what ideas they have on how to solve America's problems, and I think in that comparison, we'll win in a landslide. The remarks about Harris's race have privately infuriated some Republicans who feel it shifts the spotlight back on the GOP instead of Democrats' missteps. Now, to be clear, they're not mad that Republicans are being racist because they think that racism and sexism is bad. They're mad because it's making them look bad. They couldn't care less in actuality. But I mean, this is humiliating. This is so embarrassing. If this were my party, I would be mortified. The fact that they have to scold grown adults and tell them to stop being so overtly fucking racist and sexist. I mean, that kind of tells you everything you need to know about this unserious party, does it not? But I mean, the reason why they're trying to rein in the party, specifically the more outspoken racists, is because they know this kind of bullshit turns off regular Americans. If you want to win, you have to appeal to swing voters and regular people. And guess what? Women as well, people of color as well, not groipers, not far right extremists, but normal working class people who don't like to see explicit racism and sexism. So on one hand, it's very gross to see so much overt racism and sexism, even though that's not surprising. But on the other hand, they know they're digging their own political graves with this sort of degenerate bullshit. But again, this is only week one. Kamala hasn't even been the candidate for a whole week. And this is what we've already seen. And there's still more than 100 days left until the election, and they still have plenty of time to cook up even more outrageous attacks against Kamala Harris that have nothing to do with policy. And even though they're currently ahead, and all they really have to do is just shut the fuck up, I don't think they're going to be able 
to help themselves. Telling Republicans to not be racist or sexist is like telling dogs to not bark. It's innate. It's in their very nature, and they can't help themselves. It's who they are. So buckle up, because the racism and the massage in the war, you know, all that we've seen this week, this is just the tip of the fucking iceberg. It's going to get a lot worse before this election is over. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree, tree, tree. tree. <laughs> tree. They not like us. Tree. Tree. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? 